we had Timo. Definitely not as cold as it has been the last few days here in Northern California. Not that I should complain to you guys. So I'm pretty sure everyone who's on right now... Morning, Landon! I take it back. Most people who are on right now are um, East Coasters. And that is quite the epic snowstorm, my friends. Quite the epic snowstorm. My uncle called me from the 33rd floor uh, of his apartment in the Upper East Side in Manhattan at like 1 a.m. his time. Yeah, it was like 10 o'clock my time. And uh, he's just like, hey, I'm, I'm uh, drinking a glass of tequila, I'm looking outside the window, and everyone I know on this side of, of the country is asleep. I was just like, yeah, and he's like, just literally called to talk shit and philosophy about life, making deathbed memories. So, it's not going to be like the coolest. He, um, oh, look how old he is too. The sun, he's gonna see Luna because she's just so cute. Her little dog. Um, so he has this concept, right? And he calls them, uh, DBM, deathbed memories. And, uh, basically his goal in life is to make as many of these as possible. And the idea is that when you lie down on your deathbed, these are the memories that come up, and that having a, a high quality uh, amount of those is a is a life well lived. So, yeah, that was my blizzard talk with a close friend. But there. So we're gonna get started. Just a moment here. I just really wanted to say, Puppers has arrived to the mat. True life. True talk. <laughs> she really has. She's like, oh, thanks for laying this out for me. I appreciate it. So I'm Inu. Pause it because we're going to ground down here. So what we do here is take off the three count down. Uh, here. What we do here is a an all levels uh, yoga practice. I just want to leave Luna in the frame because she's so cute. It's an all levels yoga and meditation practice, so no experience necessary. And if you're super advanced in your practice, then you can just modify to keep things uh, challenging and interesting and uh, 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 helpful to you, you know? We'll start with about a 10 minute uh, seated meditation and move into 50 or so minutes of uh, movement, so yoga poses and stretches, some functional movement, primal movements, lymphatic shaking, um, breath work. And then we'll end with a nice long shavasana, final relaxation pose, and, and I'll guide you through that and play some, some Tibetan singing bowls for you, or singing bowl singular. I only brought one up here with me. Um, yeah, and then we'll just have a nice little tea chat and, and uh, integrate and decompress. Swiss, good morning, my friend. Namaste. Hello. Hello. We got people from all over the world joining us this morning. You know, just take a moment to silence all your devices. <laughs> and come to sit nice and tall, whether you're in a chair or on the ground. Chest comes over heart. Head. <laughs> Chest comes over hips, head comes over heart, and hands come to rest on the lap. Palms down to ground down, or palms up to give and receive energy if that uh, feels like you have a little extra to give today. Eyes can come to a close, or lower to a soft gaze if that's more comfortable for you. We'll just start this practice with three cleansing breaths. In through the nose, the shoulders rise up towards the ears, and an audible sigh out through the mouth, 
drop the shoulders away. Allowing the breath to return to your natural pace. We'll just take a moment here to arrive. Let go of everything that came before and everything that's to come up after. And just become present to yourself here in this space. Here in this moment. beginning to allow sounds into your awareness. Perhaps the ticking of a clock. The sound of a roommate getting ready for work. Letting all sounds in all part of this moment, this experience. Notice the temperature of the air on your skin. feeling of your clothes where they touch your body. And the weight where your body makes contact with the ground below you. The weight of your hands on your knees. And begin to scan your body from head down towards toes, like passing through an x-ray machine. We're scanning for any tightness or sensitivity, any restlessness or fidgeting. And using that information, whatever may have called out to you to inform your practice as we move forward. Shifting the attention from Anamaya Kosha, the body, to Pranamaya Kosha, our energy. Take a moment to notice where you are energetically on a scale of one to 10. One being exhausted, fatigued, ready for bed. Ten being so full of energy, it's hard to sit still. And bring that awareness to the breath. No need to change it, just observe inhalations, exhalations, and whatever holding, whatever space in between. Shifting the awareness up to Manomaya Kosha, the mind. 
allowing thoughts and emotions to arise freely. No need to engage or interact with them. Observe these thoughts from a distance, like an image being projected onto a screen. The story goes on without our participation. And just notice what are the quality of the thoughts today? Do they have a positive or a negative tilt to them? Are they ruminating on the past or attempting to predict the future? Not right or wrong, not good or bad, just something to notice. And we'll bring that awareness back down to the breath. This time actively working to expand the breath. Every inhale sips in a little more air. Every exhale lets something more go. Inhaling into the belly, Belly expands like a balloon, inflating. Exhales, release belly button in towards spine. Actively deflate, pulling belly button in. Full belly breathing like this, in and out through the nose if that's available. Taking slow, deep breaths, we'll begin our equal parts breathing practice. So inhaling through the nose, we'll begin to put a count to that breath. So internally, silently counting one, two, three, and so on. Once you get to the top of your breath and you can't sip in any more air, match the exhale to that inhale number. Say you breathe in, the top of your inhale is the number seven. On the exhale, at the same beat, at your own pace, you exhale to seven. And continue like a cycle there. space between top and bottom teeth as the jaw relaxes, tongue falls away from the roof of the mouth, and the space between the eyebrows broadens, muscles in the forehead relax, no furrowing brows. Being seated up tall is going to give your lungs more space to deeply breathe.
mind wanders, come back to the breath, come back to yourself, back to your counting. On your next exhale, no rush to get there. Release any effort from this breath. Returning to a natural pace. We'll bring our hands to meet at heart center in Anjali Mudra. No space between the fingers. Thumbs pressed into the sternum. Consider here setting an intention or a dedication for your practice. Be your intention behind this class alone or the intention you've been working with all year. And state it in the present and the affirmative. Um, so instead of saying, I want to become patient, the intention sounds like, I am patient. I want to get stronger. The affirmation, uh, the intention would be, I am strong. We'll seal that intention with the sound of OM. You're welcome to chant along with me. First, a uh, cleansing breath. your hands to your lap, drop your chin to your chest, and on an inhale, right ear rolls over towards right shoulder. Exhaling chin to chest, left ear rolls towards left shoulder. Just allowing the head to roll like that, side to side. Next time it rolls through center, we'll bring it up to neutral. Eyes can still be closed for this because we're just going to roll the shoulders forward. So we're just inviting movement into the body. Opening up that space between the shoulder blades and upper back. And roll the shoulders back now. Opening up the chest. And coming to stillness in the shoulders. on some neck mobility, midweek neck mobility, if you've been working on a computer all, all week, let's uh, undo some of that. So I'm going to bring the fingers back to the top of the jawbone, or before the ear, and I'm just going to move the fingers out maybe an inch or so, and you can give the neck a slide side to side. This is one of the functional movement, uh, a rehabilitation. Sorry, good word. Rehabilitating movements that my friend Rome taught me. 
he's like really big in like the primal movement, functional uh, fitness world. And like totally like changed my life for real. So you don't want to turn your head, right? And you don't want to move the shoulders. Shoulders are relaxed, head slightly back. We're sliding the next side to side. It makes it really easy. Just bring the fingers a little bit further. And you're like, this is impossible. Bring the fingers a little bit closer. You can move nice and slow and smooth. So we're opening up new areas in the cervical spine. So in between those little neck bones. Three, two, one. Back to center. Just look over the left shoulder, the right shoulder. It's like a little shake out from that movement. All right, and then we're gonna move into a uh, different neck opening uh, ex uh, exercise. I'm just turning to the side so you can see me, but you can stay facing forward. Whole body stays still, chin tucks towards chest. It rolls down, so we're leading with the nose, like drawing a big circle. The nose goes all the way forward. Up and back. It pulls back in towards the chest. So just moving that movement out, trying to get to our full range of motion. Getting really to the edges of how big this circle that's being created can be. Moving nice and smooth, nice and slow, and of course, we're breathing. No holding in the breath. Now we're going to change directions. Chin pulls all the way in and back. So now it's more like you're leading with your chin as the chin comes forward and comes down. Scoop. And return. We'll return it back to center. We'll let the ear drop side to side. Shift out. Inhale, arms sweep up overhead. And exhale, we'll bend over to the right. Left arm reaches over, opening those side ribs, intercostal muscles. Inhale up through center. And exhale, nice big sweep over to the left. We'll just connect this movement with the body, with the breath. Inhaling up through center, you can make it flowy. Exhale to the side. Some lateral stretching, side bending. So you just connect the speed of your body the length of your breath. And like seven, the arms come up through center. We'll exhale to the right. Left hand lands on the right knee. Right arm lands behind you. Chest opens towards side wall. Inhale up through center. And exhale over to the left. Following the breath like this, in through center. And out to twist. It's not gonna be your deepest twist of your life because we're just there for a half breath. But that's okay, we're just waking the body up to this movement. And back to center. Bend in the elbows. Hands come towards ears. And we'll wave the hands out. warming up the hands and the wrists before we put any weight on them. 
Thumb slip down. Fingers wiggle like you're playing the piano. And palm slip to the sky. Fingers are pressed back as far as they'll go. Fingers spread wide like tossing pizzas. It's a very, very poor technique. So we want the hands to be back, back, so far back that our forearms actually begin to fatigue in this movement. And we're just like checking in for any like grinding or clicking that you're hearing. Right? It's like not a good sign and not a bad sign. It's just something to notice, you know? And just like shaking off water. It's a gentle shake. Three, two, one. Awesome. So we're gonna bring our legs out in front. Begin spreading and scrunching the toes. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm obsessed with those um, hand stretches and, and exercises because I have a lot more to gain from taking 15 seconds a day to work on some, or a minute a day to work on some wrist resiliency, uh, knowing that my whole life basically relies on my hands and wrists functioning. So I paint for a living, and I like do downward facing dogs for a living, right? So why not <laughs> look a little silly, but <laughs> build up some some strength and some resiliency in that <clears throat> in that area of my body. So as I encourage you guys to do it, and I invite you to do it with me every morning. Just bend in the knees, bring the feet nice and wide. Just allow the knees to drop side to side. And if you're on a pillow, just yeah, let it go, let it go. So just letting the hips kind of wake up here. And then one mat on the face back. Oh, why are you home? You should be at work. I bet it's because of the snowstorm. Okay, okay. Okay, next time the knees fall over to the side. Shoot. I'm going to go onto my mat. Next time the knees fall over to the right, and bring the hands to frame this uh, right knee. Yes. And taking a deep breath in, we'll pull the shoulders back like proud pigeon pose, opening up to the sky, deep breath in. Exhale and release belly, chest, head towards the ground, and then inhale, roll it up like your cat pose. Heavy head comes up, laps. Exhale, rolls you down. Belly, chest, head. Inhale, rolls you back up. And think of it like the belly reaching towards the wall in front of you. Can't go any further, so it lowers. The chest is reaching towards the wall in front of you. Can't go any further, it lowers. Head reaching towards the wall in front of you. Can't go any further, it lowers. And dramatic roll back up. We've got two more on the side. Connect to your own breath's pace. Slow your breath down. Smooth your movement out. One more half lower. So we're going to lower all the way down, belly, chest, head. And the head comes to land on stacked fists, the ground, hands, 
We are to relaxing so that the sh shoulders don't feel like they're in a perpetual push-up. And so the whole body's relaxed and you really breathe into that right thigh, right glute hip area. Wherever you might feel this stretch. Just let everything else melt away. And then we press the ground away, walk back upright. And making sure the legs are in this stag pose, this zigzag. Hands will come to frame the, the uh, front leg still. We're going to work on uh, lift, uh, knee lift here. So the knee and the foot are lifting at the same exact time by squeezing this side butt muscle. notice if this is like you're like my legs not going anywhere like how are you doing that you can just move like it like just like a degree or two move forward that's gonna give you a little more space don't start here like this is gonna be like really easy you want to be as upright as possible and then keep shifting forward a degree or so until you get to the point where you can lift We're still breathing, strengthening muscles around the hip socket. We've got three left. So the trick is I barely touch the ground. I'm just like tapping the ground and coming right back up. If you let your whole leg come down and like relax in between, it may feel like you're taking breaks, but you're taking more work for yourself to have to re-begin that flex. Whew. Nice. Okay. So, I'm going to take the front foot. How can I get into this safely? Okay. I take it back. We're going to frame the front knee. Come up towards kneeling and the left foot steps up, excuse me, the right foot steps up between the hands. Back leg comes up, and we're going to just rock it forward and back. I've been kind of loving this stretch the last couple of days. <laughs> Those of you who joined me know, um, just for the calf stretch. Oh, so good. So if you're not feeling a stretch in your calf, that's the big muscle behind your shin on your lower leg, then you're going to want to straighten your leg out even more. So the back of the knee is towards the ceiling. And pr really press that heel back towards the ground, even though it's not going to touch. To activate back stretch. And we'll let the knee gently come down to the ground. Untuck the toes. Keep the right knee over the right ankle. This knee is super far back, so already here, I already feel a stretch on this Front right, uh, front left thigh, and hip flexor. And I'm pressing the shoelace part of the foot strong into the ground, so strong that the knee lifts. Even if the knee doesn't lift, that's still the activation point. So I'm using the top of my foot as a fulcrum to extend this leg straight. And I'm just, I'm not letting my knee slam down at all. I'm just gently. Extending and lowering. Extending and lowering and breathing fully the entire time. Awesome. Next time it lowers down, just once again come to seated. So I'm just bending this foot in front, coming down on into my stag pose with my knees. I'll bring my hands behind my legs and drop the knees side to side. Just a little free movement up. Let's get my legs up a little. Cool. And the knees fall over to the left this time. Still in this uh, stag kind of like zigzag. 
zigzag pose. Uh, knee lands on the ground, not on the foot, foot's in front of the knee. Hands come to frame the left knee. We inhale like a proud pigeon, shoulder blades fold together, drop in, and exhaling, belly reaches forward, chest, then head all the way to the ground. And your inhale rolls you back up, one vertebra at a time. So vertebra are the bones in our spine. They're all stacked up on one another. We're opening up the space, opening up the mobility between the joints of that structure. Long breath in to rise. And out to lower at your own breath's pace. And the next time you lower, no rush to get there, we come to land all the way down. Head comes to land on top of the hands, stacked fists, the ground, wherever so that your shoulders can relax. You're not in a perpetual push-up, upper backs unengaged. Whole body's melting. In fact, we're stretching out that left hip area, that left hip glute thigh area where we might feel this stretch. And it feel counterintuitive because we have so many active stretches in class. So this is a passive one. Actually, the more you relax, the deeper the stretch will be. And the rest of your body's weight through gravity will help open up this area. Hands pressed into the ground, knee back upright. Walk the hands back to upright where the shoulders come up over the hips. 90 degrees in this right leg. And we'll begin to lift. So, really attempting to get the knee and the ankle up at the same exact time. Good morning, Paulina. Uh, squeezing this glute. Tapping and lower. And if you're just joining us now, say you're like trying to get your leg up, right? And you're just like, this is not happening. It's a little lean forward. So that counterbalance, that counterweight is going to make it easier for you the further forward you go. But see if you can challenge yourself. Just, just have a few of these. The more upright, the more challenging. Um, I always think start there and then take it down a notch until it's possible for you. And we're still breathing, even in the challenge. Just got like two more of these. Keeping that side glute squeeze tight. Nice, let it go, releasing down. Then we'll bring our hands to frame the left knee. Coming on to hands and knees, Feet, left foot steps up between the hands. Let's give that hip a little bit of a stretch. So let's tuck the toes, the right toes under, bring the knee up. And we're gonna just give it a rock forward and back. Um, more or less, we're just making sure to keep this knee over the ankle instead of rocking that too far forward. We can just come to middle and then a little bit back behind the ankle. Instead of forward and back, we've got back and center. Okay, we're focusing on this back leg, stretching out the calf. And breathing fully, keep all the back diaphragm breath. 
And we'll gently release the knee down to the ground, untuck the toes so the shoelace part of the foot's in the ground. And just like bringing my leg back a little bit further. Just go back as far as you need to start to feel it in this right hip and uh, thigh, but not so far back that your hips start to open out to the long side of the mat. We still want our hips square to the short end of the mat. When the top of the foot presses into the ground so hard, the knee lifts. So nice and gentle, we're lifting, stretching out the top of the ankle, top of the foot. You'll definitely feel the top of your thigh and hip. And it might not be going all the way up to straight, but that's just the direction that we're headed. But even if it just lifts a bit, you're building those muscles and you're building that ankle resiliency too. Just got one more breath like this. So you're gonna walk the hands towards the long side of the mat and bring this left knee with you. So now my foot and knee are at a 90, sorry, 45 degree angle. I'm gonna turn over and bring this right foot in as well. So I'm sitting like a little frog in a deep squat. This is called Malasana, deep squat. So I'm trying to get my heels to the ground I bring my elbows to the insides of my knees. If your heels do not reach the ground, you are not alone. You're just gonna wanna oh, grab a blanket or a towel and place it under your feet. If you don't have a block, prop, don't feel like going to get one, you can fold your mat under and then work towards pressing your heels into the ground. Okay, next posture thing. So here we are rounded. This is just this is like, this is where we like start. And what we're gonna try to do is get the heart over the hips. So how do I do that? It's a, like a seesaw. I'm bringing my hips down and forward, my chest up and back. So from here, my chest isn't gonna be able to go up and back without my hips swinging forward. Those are tucking in of the hips. And you can feel like you're about to fall back, so I just take my elbows and I press them into the insides of my knees for stability. So palms can come together. We bring them down to make 180 degrees in the arms. Just like giving a little sway side to side. Just get a nice inner hip stretch once you can get your hips heavy, heavy enough. Just got a deep breath in here. Exhale, look over the right shoulder, give the neck a stretch. Inhale, back through center. Exhale, left. Inhale, center. And exhale, release the hands down to the ground. We'll extend the leg, bring the hips up, and bend one knee and then the other. Then give the head a nod, yes. Give it a shake, no. Grab opposite elbows, create a frame for your head, and give yourself a rock side to side. For rag doll. Release the hands down to the mat. And the feet can actually stay pretty wide. So the distance, more or less, that we want the feet is one leg's distance. So here's the cheat sheet. If you got a skandasana. Okay. This is one leg distance. Hip to leg. So more or less that distance, right? So I'm pressing into the pinky side edge of my feet. Socks probably is a bad idea, but it's kind of cold, so let me just roll on with it, baby. 
And I'm gonna bring my hands to my hips and call, press all the way up to stand and not be in frame anymore. Perfect. <laughs> so, here we are. Palms foot, uh, what's it called? Turn open, thumbs towards the sky. Heels come in, toes come out, star pose. Deep breath in, get tall. And exhale, goddess. So we bend in the knees, bend in the elbows. Trying to create, it's almost like you're a hieroglyphic. The knees are trying to get to 90 degrees, the elbows are trying to get to 90 degrees, and shoulder blades are pulling in together behind you. Deep breath in here. And out. Stand. I'm gonna grab maybe this back through star. Right, back to star. And then toes come forward, feet parallel to one another. Hands come to the hips. And we're gonna lower down, hinging from the hips. Move. Hinging from the hips until I can't go any further. If I go any further, my back's going to round. So I just take a second here or a breath and then release the head back down. So it's called standing wide angle fold. The hands can release down to the ground or blocks, but it's not to press the ground away, it's just to hang heavy. So I even like sometimes bringing the, my hands to the back of my head. Okay. <sighs> this is what I was telling other people not to wear socks during class. It was so cold this morning. It's cool. So I'm just letting <laughs> the head be heavy. I'm letting the weight shift forward a bit. We'll, we'll let the hands come down to the ground. And actually we will press the ground away. Um, if your hands don't reach the ground, uh, just grab a stack of books or a block for that. Then you just sweep the right arm open, twisting the chest open. I'm letting my hips swing with the movement. So here's me at center. Hips go with me. Right hand releases down, left arm sweeps open, hips go with me. Okay. So we're connecting breath with movement here. The inhale, <clears throat> instead of exhaling through the twist, which is like what we normally do, this is almost more of like a chest opening uh, versus a forward fold. So we're gonna take a breath in as we reach up with the left fingertips, out as the hands come back to center, hips come back through center here too, and then the uh, right arm opens up with that next inhale. And we're just following that breath with this nice sweeping open motion. You should feel a stretch on your inner, uh, inner groin of the opposite leg from the hand that's up. We're just gonna have one more to each side. Deep breath in here in center. And the exhale, fold, bending the elbows. So the hands might come forward in front of you, almost like downward facing dog. I just want to take a break from downward dogs today and chaturangas and the whole sun salutation system, just a little shake up. Alternately, it might feel good to bring your arms through center. And the last option I'll give you is to reach out to grab the pinky side edges of the feet. Or you can grab ankles. And then when you have this grip, you can bend in the elbows to bring your head closer to the space between your legs. All the while we're breathing, all the while the hips are pressed up towards the sky. 
and the weight of the body is shifting forwards towards the toes without lifting the heels. So don't have your hips back here. Send your hips forward. It's scarier, but more beneficial for the body, safer for the joints, and you'll get deeper in your stretch. Prasarita, Padottanasana. Standing wide angle fold. If your head's touching the ground, just bring your feet closer to one another. Make it more of like an isosceles triangle. I don't know if it's an isosceles triangle, but <laughs> this doesn't mean your legs are too far wide. Last deep breath here. Then hands can come back to center. Slide away here. Ugh. Hands come onto hips. Pressing the feet in towards one another. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Bring it all the way back up. To stand. Whew. Step the feet in. Good work. Coming back to this standing wide angle. So keep my feet nice and wide. I'm going to turn the right foot towards the short end of the mat, keeping the left foot uh, almost like a going into warrior two. Bend in this front knee, arms sweep up on the inhale. On the exhale, left hand lands on left hip, and right hand comes down towards the ground, or a block. So if you have that stack of books, perfect. Let's do that, do that. Um, and then this left leg floats up like it's like a side kick to the wall behind me. As I extend the bottom leg straight, my hips are open to the wall. So my left hip is stacked directly over right hip. I'm really actively pressing through the heel. So it's like top leg is super straight. Hands on the hip to make sure that the hips are stacked over one another. And then you might play with a little balance here. Hi. Well, this is already playing with balance. I'm sure some of you are experiencing. But you can look down at where your hand is, but then bring your hand up to your right thigh, your right hip crease. Pressing back, try to get the torso in line with the leg. Ardha Chandrasana, balancing half moon. There's a bunch of arm variations. You can open your arms like the letter T. I like having the hands on the hips because it feels more stable. And I get to make sure that I'm not closing in with that top hip. So just got one more breath here. Bend in the front knee, landing in warrior two-ish stance, back to center. Deep breath in, let it go. <sighs> Left toes turn to face the back of your mat. And we'll bend in that knee. Inhale, arms sweep up overhead. Exhale, right hand to right hip. Left hand comes down like a half cartwheel. Ground. Well, this would be very bad cartwheel form, but in a way it kind of is like that. As this hand comes down to the ground, the left leg straightens and the right leg lifts. So we're pressing that foot back towards the wall behind us. That muscle that we worked on earlier with the ankle knee lift in the stag pose, that's that same muscle we're using here in our Ardha Chandrasana. Right hip stacked over left hip. Like you're between two panes of glass. Resetting as necessary. Maybe that bottom hand comes up to the left hip crease. And then it's like a press away to get the torso up as well. So we're just trying to get the whole body in one line. Resetting as necessary. So if you're falling out, whoop, just begin again. Hand comes down, 
left leg straightens, right leg lifts, pressing the heel away, and playing with the bottom hand coming up to the hip crease. No, I said hip crease. I did not say the knee. I did not say the shin. It's on the ground slash block or stack of books, or it's on the hip crease. That's basically it. Or you could be, might be playing with that letter T arm variation. We just got one more breath here. Come out, we bend in the left knee and land softly. Whew. That warrior too, take a deep breath in. Let it go. Let's give it a nice shake out. That's nicer. Now shaking the foot out, the other leg. shake. So we're just going to come into our like full lymphatic shape practice. I'm setting an alarm so I don't skip on you guys. Full timer. So you're just going to start to shake your whole body. Giving you a jump. Up your shoulders. Rise and drop. Rise and drop. So you can come into a full jump like this, or just lifting the back heels and letting them slam down into the ground with bent knees. You land with bent knees to create like a ripple reverberation in the body. So just letting your whole body like jiggle and kind of flop. You're gonna do this to release tension. You can start breathing through your mouth now if you've been breathing through your nose the whole time, which is the recommendation during class. <sighs> Audible sighs, always welcome, but highly encouraged, particularly during this exercise and this practice. So we're just continuing. You can take up space, you know? Take up space. When you feel like stopping, just double time. Just keep it going. It feels like work until it doesn't, and then your just body just gets used to this shake. And it doesn't take as much energy to make it happen. When I first started practicing, I was like, oh my god, this is like so annoying. Kind of hated it. I thought yoga was about moving slowly. Why are we moving fast? Why are we jiggling? What the hell is happening? But <laughs> obviously, I really love it now. So. Once you get past all that inner dialogue, all that resistance to looking silly, to whatever you're afraid of, wasting your time, this is a waste of time, just shaking in front of the screen. You know, once you get past whatever your stories are, whatever your, you know, mind stories are that keep you from trying new things or from being a little fun, <laughs> once you get past that, so then you get the real benefit from the things that we're, you're, you may be working on or trying to learn or trying to let go of. Without a shake, it's all about letting go. Just keep it going. We got three, two, one. All right, we're coming into our breath of joy. What it looks like is three sips of air in with no exhale in between and a big ha exhale out. So inhaling a third of your lung capacity in, arm sweep forward. Inhale, third of your lung capacity in, arm sweep out. There's no exhale in between. Last sip of air in, arm sweep forward. So now your full lungs are full and a big ha. Arm sweep back, like through chair pose. So it goes in, 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 ha! Got 10 of those babies. In, 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 ha! In, in, in. 
jump in yet. Now's your chance. Ha! Ha! Last one, make it count. Ha! <sighs> Just come to stand. A little gout clout just in time, my friend. Feet come nice and wide, hand on the belly, hand on the heart. Eyes can close. Just take a moment here to see what was created. Taking that body like a snow globe, giving it a righteous shake. And here we just observe where has that glitter dust fallen and settled? What has been revealed? Increased heart rate, maybe increased body temperature. What else? Gently blinking your eyes open. And grab a sip of water. Uh, towel off if you did uh, <laughs> get a little sweaty during that. It's getting really cold today. <laughs> if you're on the ground, it's good morning, my friend. Totally open up my emoji that I'm too far away to see. Totally opened up my Fuji water. <laughs> so cute. All right, if you're on the ground already, you just stay there. If you're standing, you can come down with me. We're on the top of my mat. Inhale, arms sweep up overhead. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, knees bend deep, 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 so deep that we come to seated. I want a sip of, sip of tea too. Great. So, hug your knees in towards chest. Just give it a gentle roll back. Make sure there's no water bottle, no teacup, no death spike behind you <laughs> before you roll back, please. Thank you. And then we're landing and uh, giving just the lower back a little massage. Kind of hugging my knees in towards my chest. Let the feet come down to the ground close to the hips. They don't have to be touching. I think I might need my feet to touch my hips, but no need for all of that. Let the hands come down by the sides. And inhale, we'll, uh, begin to press the hips up towards the sky for bridge pose, lifting one vertebra at a time. Head straight up towards the ceiling. We tuck the shoulders underneath, maybe even interlacing the hands to press the forearms and the fists into the ground, getting even more lift in the Setu Bandhasana bridge pose. Glutes squeeze tight, hips are lifted, and the breath is so deep, you can see your belly rise and fall past the tip of your nose. So this pose is really great for strengthening your whole hip area like all of those hip thrusting type activities that need to happen. Um, okay, that sounded really freaking scandalous, but I didn't mean it that way, I mean that too. But really, even just standing up and having good posture when you're standing, um, getting up off the couch, This, these kinds of poses are gonna strengthen you to do that. 
And if you want to be independent late into your life and not need to be assisted by others or have to be put into a place like an assisted living place, then being able to stand up, get up off the couch, get out of a chair, uh, stand up off the toilet by yourself is going to be key. So here we are building those muscles. And yes, I have been talking to you so you don't realize how long we've been here. We've got another deep breath here, lifting as high as possible, full breath here. Fingers unlace, and we'll lower down one vertebra at a time, starting from the top and landing with the hips. Nice. And we'll just drop the knees side to side. Let's chat. Let's chat saying. I mean, opened up my chest during that exercise. Breath of joy woke me right up. Oops, I rolled onto my death spike. <laughs> I love you guys. <laughs> oh man, good, good. I'm glad it opened up your chest. I'm glad it woke you up, Daydream, my love. And uh, <laughs> what is killing me? Okay, so we're setting up like going into a, for a second round of bridge pose, but that's not where we're headed. That's just the setup. We're crossing the right ankle over the left knee. Foot is flexed, knee presses away. And then the left thigh pulls in towards the body using just core strength. And I've gone as far as I can go. Don't go any further. Hands reach through. Left hand around the outside of the right, left thigh. Left hand through that little like donut hole that was created to grab behind this left knee. Right knee presses away. You can even use your elbow maybe uh, to leverage that knee away. Right foot stays flexed. Shoulders stay relaxed. I'm using just bicep strength to pull the leg in. I'm not using shoulder tension, which is a natural go-to. <laughs> As the left thigh pulls in, the right knee presses away, and we're breathing deep into that right hip. And gently release the left foot to the ground, right foot to the ground, left ankle crosses over right thigh. Using just core strength, press the knee, uh, press the right thigh in towards the body. When you know you can't go any further, reach the hands around to grab behind the right leg. Might use your Elbow to press the right knee away, sorry, to push the left knee away as the right thigh pulls in. Shoulders melt away, just a bicep curl. And just as important as this right thigh pulling in is the left knee pressing away. It's the, like, one's not more important than the other. We're looking for a deep stretch in the left hip here. We'll gently release the hands, release the right foot to the ground, release the left foot to the ground. Send the left leg straight and pull the right knee in towards the body, avoiding the belly. We'll pull the knee in towards the armpit. Left foot is flexed, pressing as if I'm pressing the wall away for a wind relieving pose. So we did this pose on Monday. But I think we can bring it more in it's relaxing at the end, it's reclining, and it's good for digestion. Um, so whatever time of day it is for you, you guys are all over the world, um, this would be beneficial. We've got one more breath here. Uh, 
And then straight from here, take your left hand on your right knee and cross the knee over the body, over to the left, letting the left hip stack over right hip. Hand can stay on the knee. And the right arm opens up like the letter T. So this is a different variation of Supta Matsyandrasana, our supine spinal twist that we practice every day. So letting everything else in the body be relaxed. This top knee, it doesn't matter if it's touching the ground or not. It's not touching the ground in my body, but if it is on yours, that's okay. The whole body's more or less relaxed. The hand's just kind of holding the knee in place. It's not yanking, pulling. Every exhale just invites your body to sink a little heavier into the ground below. We'll bring the head back up through center. Bring that knee up through center. Extend it out long. And the left knee folds in towards the So avoid the belly. So I do like a little like, that was really dramatic. So I do something a little bit more subtle than that. But just so you see, it's like the knee goes out and then pulls back in. Yeah. Fingers interlace around that knee. We're pulling the knee in towards the armpit. Using chest, core stretch, just like my shoulders totally relax. They're not doing any of the effort. Isolating the biceps and the right foot flexes, like I'm pressing the wall away to keep that leg active and it gives a nice little stretch to the front hip flexor that we've been uh, uh, picking on all day. <laughs> so our poses in yoga, they do contort and almost like massage our internal organs uh, by twisting and folding and uh, all the poses that we do. They're going to activate and flush out different parts of our body. So with this wind relieving pose, very aptly named uh, posture, we're working with the, the intestines and the lower belly. So you might feel that pressure. It's intentional. Just got one more breath here. And the right hand on the left knee crosses the leg over the body until the left hip stacks over right hip. Left arm opens up like the letter T. Arms not up overhead, arms not down by the butt. It's straight out from the chest. Maybe the head looks over that extended left arm to give the neck a stretch. But more importantly, this shoulder is working its way to the ground. So everything else, doesn't matter, see that that's how far the ground is, doesn't matter if it's touching the ground or not, but this left shoulder is your anchor. That's the effort. Just breathing here, every exhale is an invitation to relax, an invitation to let something more go. Head comes back up through center. Uh, knee comes back up through center. Extend the legs straight. And both knees come in for apanasana. So we are going to bring our knees to the chest as far as you can and grab around the shins, around the knees for opposite elbows to the best of your ability, right? Even if you can't reach your elbows, you can still do the pose. Head relaxes to the ground. You're trying to press your hips down to the ground. So my whole lower back, whole lumbar spine is connected to the earth. And I even tuck my chin a bit to bring the cervical spine, my neck bones close to the ground. Imagine every vertebra in your spine in contact with the earth below you. Apanasana, it's a spine lengthening posture. It's not comfortable. We're looking to continue breathing, even though we're squeezing as tight as we can on our bellies and our chest with the knees. Focusing on trying to get the whole spine on the ground. We've got one more deep breath here, one more deep squeeze. Nice, and then releasing. 
for you. Full body stretch feels good. Really, whatever next movement is whatever is going to feel best for you in your body. So it doesn't have to have a fancy yoga name. It doesn't have to have a name at all. It could just be some intuitive movement, some intuitive stretching. As you prepare for Shavasana, final relaxation pose. Just let yourself move in any which way would feel good to round out your practice. Whatever body part maybe that called out for your attention before and you haven't really, uh, what's it called? Activated it. Now is the time to give your body whatever attention it really is asking for. So that you can lay more restfully in Shavasana, which is what we're preparing for. So that might look like putting on socks, uh, rolling a blanket on, uh, as your body temperature will lower in this next practice. And then as we set up for Shavasana, our final relaxation pose, that looks like is laying down the length of the mat. Feet come at least a foot apart, legs so relaxed that the feet naturally splay open to the sides. If this brings any pain to your lower back, any pressure, you can bend the knees by putting a blanket or a pillow, maybe a towel below. Keep the knees bent, and then I just lift my hips and tuck them so my lower back gets a little bit more length. Hands come down the sides of the body, palms face open to the sky. A symbol, a mudra of receptivity. Allow yourself to receive the full benefits of your effort here today. I like to tuck my shoulder blades underneath. It just feels like my chest has a little more space for air, a little bit more support. And the head is centered as well. So I give a little, just a slight little tuck to my chin as I place my head down. Give more length to the cervical spine, but I'm not like squeezing my chin to my chest or anything like that. It's just like a very gentle tuck. Eyes can close. Uh, if that's not comfortable, you can just gaze at the ceiling, at the sky. Not looking at anything in particular. And you stay reclining. I'm just coming up to seated so I can more easily lead you through this meditation. I am play some singing bowls for you. So we'll start this practice just as we started the last grounding. With three cleansing breaths. in through the nose, and an audible sigh out through the mouth. <sighs> so glad to hear that gout cloud. Beautiful. Deep breath in through the nose. Breathing to continue just through your nose if that's available. Inviting your exhalations to become longer and deeper than your inhalations. space between top and bottom teeth as the jaw hangs heavy and the tongue falls away from the roof of the mouth, the 
symbol of Chitta Vritti, monkey mind. I'm just inviting him to take a seat out for this one. Because all the muscles and the lips and cheeks relax. The nose and nostrils rest. Allow a gentle passage of air like waves lapping up to shore to pass through. Eyes rest heavy in their sockets, eyelids just barely touching. And the space between the eyebrows broadens. And all the muscles in the forehead relax. And all the muscles surrounding the ears with all their wrinkles and fold into the ear canals. All rest. Muscles in the back and top of the head relax. Neck and throat relax. Shoulders, shoulder blades, and that space in between all melt away. Upper arms and elbows relax. Lower arms and wrists release. Palms, backs of the hands, knuckles, fingers, fingertips, fingernail beds, rest and integrate all that you practice. Upper back. Middle and lower back rest supported by the ground below. Chest naturally rising and falling, perhaps imperceptibly. Belly rising and falling with the breath. pelvis, hips, rest heavy, supported by the earth below, thighs and knees melt away, lower legs and ankles relax. Heels, arches, toe ball mounds, tops of the feet, and all of the toes relax. Whole body rests. Whole body rests. Body rest.
everything that did and did not happen in class today. And know that in yoga, practice makes practice. Nothing more and nothing less. Gently invite your inhalations to become longer and deeper than your exhalations. And all of that heaviness, replace the feeling of openness and expansion in the front side body. All the awareness coming, lifting to the surface as you begin to wiggle fingers and toes. Head gently rock side to side. And arms reach up overhead <clears throat> for a full body stretch. And the knees bend and roll over to whichever side feels natural, landing in a fetal position. Fully released and fully supported by the ground below you. You can use your arm as a pillow. Bring to mind any intention or dedication you set for class today. I'm gonna to take this opportunity to set one now. And if that intention inspires you, take it with you off the mat and into the world. Allow it to affect you and the people around you for the rest of your day. With eyes still closed or gently lowered, press your hands into the ground to come back up to seated, just like how we started class. Hands come to meet at heart center, palms pressed together in Anjali Mudra. Today we worked on a series of uh, neck resiliency uh, exercises as well as deep hip stretching. The first namaste is said silently to yourself, thanking your body for the effort it put into class. And the second namaste is said out loud to one another, to everyone that held this space. Namaste. Namaste, Swiss. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who joined me this morning. I hope you found something that serves you. Namaste, Bodhi. So lovely to have you guys. Honestly, I came to the mat really angry. Oh, yeah? Um, how are you feeling now? Now very much less angry. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, or awesome that you feel less angry. I think it's important to have like a have options on how to process our emotions. Um, and I don't think that like pushing them down and not feeling them is a very like healthy option in my experience um, and taking them out on other people is also not like a very healthy option in my experience and, and I'm speaking believe me from experience of both being like that's inconvenient press it down you must not feel and also this is uncomfortable I'm gonna make you feel bad because I feel bad to everyone around me so um, yeah I think that that's one of the reasons I love yoga and this practice so much is that we really get to explore other options. Yeah. And thank you for dropping the tip link. I appreciate you. Um, yes, so uh, you're, everyone's welcome to join um, class. Uh, there's no expectation for a tip, but they do uh, help me a lot. And I do make my living from, uh, what's it called? This helps. <laughs> this helps with electricity and all of that. So $5 will give you a a uh, link, a private link to the recording of today's class with timestamps in the description below. 
Uh, so say you're just in the mood for a breath of joy because you're feeling pissed off, you can just skip right to that part with a click of a button. Or say you just want to do Shavasana maybe before bed to relax, just drop that in. Omera, Omerede. Okay, is it Omera or Omer, Omerede? Omerede. Omera sounds pretty, I like Omera. But I'm open to call you, however your name's supposed to be pronounced. Um, yes, yeah, so if you send me a $5 Venmo, send me a $5 um, PayPal, the link is in the description. Um, I will send you that link once it's all edited and, and uh, tied up with a nice, nice neat little bow. If you ever miss a day, you can also um, just say, hey, instead of today's class, I want yesterday's or whatever. Much love. I uh, really appreciate all the support that I've been getting. Um, and also just like the emotional support of you guys showing up and practicing with me. Landon, it was really cool to have you uh, uh, midweek. Woo early midweek day because you're here in the west coast it's, it's way earlier for you like me and uh swiss of course it's always a always a pleasure gout kraut that surprise daydream boy i don't know if you're still here but i love you um so yeah and then we had a pretty good facebook group too danielle sydney paulina juliet and matt it was great yeah yeah i know so it's 7 p.m your time yeah, but it's not. I feel like this class works at night too. There's people who who just send me send me Venmo so that they practice at night. Best way to start a Wednesday. Today I get to paint portrait, edit some video. Um, but I really. I'm happy that I was able to start my day with all of you. That's a cool thought. Oh, look at her. Oh. Right in the beginning, she like got off the couch in the most dramatic, like downward facing dog, upward facing dog combination ever. And I was like, wait, let's just bask in the glory of an actual dog doing upward and downward facing dog. Um, happy to be here. Always a wonderful way to start my day. Thank you. I know, right? I want one of those cups. Oh, it was a cool cup. I thought you said cool pup. I totally read that completely wrong. <laughs> this cup. Yeah, it's one of Kai's. It's one of Kai Buja's. From Tivana. Back when they were a thing. I'm going up there in a few days. It might go missing. Oh my god. Will you just like put all of the um, evidence necessary to find the culprit? 